everybody. My name is Jason Normore, and I was fortunate to be one of the winners of Pitch Wars last year. So I submitted uh, my first ever manuscript called Where the Wildflowers Grow. It's an intimate collection of poetry over the past bundle of years of my life. And I was fortunate to get to hand it off to, I think, a publisher or two last year. Uh, more than anything, one of the best things that came out of it was it was a really tremendous networking opportunity. I think now I'm connected and friends with all types of people that I wouldn't have been otherwise. And on top of that, it also really challenged me as a writer to be able to articulate my vision and pitch to people what I've been up to and what I'm working on. So uh, if I could have a few minutes of your time, I'll read one or two excerpts, um, excerpts from that collection. So uh, the first one is called Neon Beyond, uh, brackets Alexander Park. During the pandemic, I was living uh, across from Alexander Park in Toronto, uh, where there was an encampment of people living as they had nowhere else to go. And so I wrote this poem for them. Scuffing rubber soles along pavement, hued by the neon glow of convenience a potential $16 million seduction displayed in the window. So I looked north to where the wildflowers have set up camp, bunched together, some by choice and some chosen for. Who is their pharaoh? These products have a hardened heart, the silenced voices of Egyptian economics. Don't we all fear the apocalypse? Don't we all worry that the famine has come? Don't we all cover our mouths to avoid gnats in our teeth? I'm south in the financial epicenter, mirages erected, culture's core. Guilty, but they bought the judge. Guilty, but they bought the priest. Guilty, but they bought how to think. Who is their pharaoh? These products of a hardened heart, the silenced voices of Egyptian economics, don't we all fear the apocalypse? Don't we all worry that the famine has come? Don't we all cover our mouths to avoid gnats in our teeth? Is no one worried about these convenient neon streets? Thanks. Yeah. Uh, this other one, uh, this next one is called It's Only You and Me Here. I wrote it uh, last summer when I visited Newfoundland for the first time after a few years. I uh, was in the process of coming out uh, myself and uh, really just trying to gain the nerve to share with my immediate circle what I was going through. So it's called, It's Only You and Me Here. It's only you and me here. The birds will be just fine. I might need a reminding on the charity of life. It's only you and me here under the shifting shadows of the clouds. On the peak of beatitudes, you're not speaking very loud. I traveled east to find you, left it all behind. Is it true to rid of hiding all really has to die? It's only you and me here, hiding in the grass. If heaven's coming from the earth, could you make this last? It's only you and me here, who must first come out? Laying here together, clarifying doubts. I'm climbing back down the cliffside. The birds are taking flight. A world forever opening, finally, ready for my life. Merci, thank you so much. Uh, let's see. Uh, this one's called Years of Creators. It'll be my last one. Uh, yeah, here it is, friends. Thanks. Call me beautiful and strange. <laughs> Untypical in tongue and movement, completely unprecedented, completely unparalleled. Years are creators, intentionally and not. Years are doors, sometimes hinged, sometimes swinging wild. Call me delusional. Call on me, I am here. The only thing I fight for is perception with a non-violent imagination. Call on me, I'm never ready. Life requires open hands. You may hold them for a while, but you can't replace the band. Call on me gods from whom words come. Call on me poets of love and life. Write on my eyes and color my ears to call out to those waiting for a call. To shake loose, wake up and become free. A life unhinged with infinite love. Cool, merci Writers Alliance. Big love everybody, thanks.
and good luck this year. <laughs>Hey there, I'm John, and last year at Pitch Wars 2021, I pitched my first book, a memoir chronicling my tumultuous upbringing under a single parent with severe, untreated mental illness. That was the intent when the book started, but over time, it became something so much more. It is still the story of my childhood trauma and the effect that it has on me as a man, but it has also become a story of growth, reconciliation, and healing. It is my belief that we have the power to create our own happiness, and it is my hope that this story will support that belief. Pitching this story at Pitch Wars was a great opportunity. Uh, traditional publishing, especially of a memoir, can be a long and very difficult process. Pitch Wars allowed me the chance to promote my story in front of all of these publishing houses at once, and that kind of opportunity, it just doesn't happen. It was also an incredible feeling and very validating to hear such positive feedback and to have two of those publishers request my manuscript for consideration. I'm still playing the waiting game on that, but, you know, fingers crossed. Since Pitch Wars, I've been fighting the urge to go back and keep editing my work. I want to make it better, and I constantly see areas and opportunities to do that. But I have told myself that it's time that I wait to work with a professional editor at this point. So I shifted my attention elsewhere, and I started writing my first full-length piece of fiction, which is a horror mystery novel. Now I'm going to read you a short segment of the story that I pitched last year, my memoir entitled My Mommy, My Monster, My Mother. In 2014, I wrote a letter to my estranged mother as a form of recommended self-therapy. I was unsure if I was going to send it, if I would ever find the nerve, and I never did. In 2021, upon completion of the book, I thought it would be a good exercise to write another. When I compared them, what I saw shocked even me. I included both of these letters in my memoir because no matter how much writing I did from start to finish, there is nothing that captures my growth so simply and so clearly than comparing these two things side by side. So here is the first of those letters. September 2014. Mom, I'm not sure where to start. It's been a decade since I left and started on my own journey, trying to pick up the pieces of all the years that came before. Why am I writing you now? Maybe it's because I have a two and a half year old daughter that you have never met. Maybe it's the sinking realization that you are running out of years and it's a shame for you to end up in the ground without making amends with your kids or even knowing your grandkids. Whatever the reason is, I want you to know this. It is not because I feel guilty. It is not because I regret walking away. It is not because I did a single thing wrong. Nothing that happened before I left and nothing that has happened in the last 10 years is my fault. With that established, I need to get something off my chest. You need to change. That is the truth that's been at the center of everything our entire lives. In case you ever wonder why we do not have a relationship, which should be completely obvious to you, here is why. Having a relationship with you is a disease. My success and my family's happiness cannot be exposed to your brand of love. You have been hurtful, deceitful, and malicious in your actions through my entire life within your care. I have watched countless people fall victim to your paranoid delusions and selfish actions. And who were your biggest victims? The most vulnerable people in your life. Your children. Lynn was pregnant at 15 years old, a result from absent parenting. Today she suffers from being obsessively protective in her love and care to an unhealthy level because she had to play mom to us at 10 or 12 years old. She carries a stubborn and often aggressive personality, yet she loves so deep you can almost feel her arms around your heart. That kid she had when she was 15 is a beautiful 15-year-old girl herself now. She has a husband who loves her and an 8-year-old boy who completes her life. She has made it and has done so through strength and the desire to be something better than we had. Kelly's way of dealing was to build a life completely devoid of her past. She couldn't possibly have separated herself from her childhood any more than she has. Fiercely independent woman, she became her own version of success and she did so alone. She suffers for this as she essentially has no relationship with her family and it hurts her. It hurts all of us. She is angry and this is what she felt she had to do and I can't blame her. Sad thing is, I can count on one hand how many times I have seen my sister and her family in the past decade. Sadder still, I don't even know her on a personal level anymore. She's practically a stranger. Our past is the cause of this. Regardless, I am proud of her because through it all, she too has made it and she is happy and she is loved. As for myself, I am angry. 
I get frustrated easily. I struggle with showing affection and managing emotions, and I have a tough time letting people in. I am independent in a way that isn't healthy. That's what you've done to me. Now here's what I have done to myself. I am ambitious, intelligent, and intensely loyal. I have a woman who loves me down to my core and the sweetest little girl ever born to this earth. I live in a beautiful home. I have a career. Every little thing I have is built from nothing. The nothing that you provided. Like both of my sisters, my role models, my mentors, I too have made it. Yet here I am, successful and proud, but still incomplete. I guess that's why I'm writing this. I need to know you heard this. I want to know you heard my piece so that I can move on. Because of the destructive nature of every prior relationship with you, it had to be done this way and not in person. My family must not be exposed. Several years ago, we met you at the hospital. You were medicated for the first time in my life. It was a surreal experience for me because the woman sitting across from me was different than who I grew up with. You seemed to listen. You understood. You seemed capable of caring just for that little while. You may recall the agreement we made then. You admitted you needed help for the first time in your life. I told you that if you were getting the help you needed, we could try to rebuild a relationship. You promised you would. A week later, you signed yourself out, and once again, I had to walk away. You are sick, Mom. You always have been. We've seen the court documents, the diagnosis. The disorders you have are treatable, but you have to want to be treated. That day at the hospital, you were seeing things with such clarity. You seemed capable of empathy and some understanding of the wrong you did, and that's an enormous step in the right direction. You need to keep taking those steps to be a better, healthier you. You were not beyond saving, and here's a heavier truth. Your relationship with your kids is not beyond saving, but you must want that change. As I said that day, when you want to dedicate yourself to that change, I will be there to hold your hand through it. You are still my mother. Don't misunderstand. I'm not preaching this out of a strong desire to reconnect or out of guilt. I do not need this to be a happy, but closure is important. If this is how things will stay, the blame is yours, and I will carry on as I have been, knowing I did my part. I am not your 17-year-old teenager anymore. That kid you knew is long gone. I am now a 27-year-old man who is a stranger to you, yet I am still your son. Despite you failing in your duty as a mother, I will not fail in mine as your son. Live your days surrounded with positive thoughts and family, or die alone in solitude and regret. The ball is in your court. It has been for the past 10 years. Should you choose to play the game and actually hit the ball back for once, you may find that there are teammates sitting on your bench who have been waiting for you to play ball for a very long time. Your son. So there you have it. I hope that provides some insight into my thoughts and feelings when I started writing this work. I hope to soon share the other half of this story, and that is the profound personal growth I experienced in the seven years following. Thank you to Writers Alliance of Newfoundland and Labrador for Pitch Wars, and good luck to this year's participants.